asked into the daily Connor Tim Memorial Company interview chair, happens to be the ranking senator on the insurance committee and knows a lot more about this issue. Let's bring him back into the show. State Senator Tony Wong. Tony, good morning. Good morning, Gary. Sorry to be late. Great to talk to you. Happy it's, Friday. It's always a pleasure. And happy Friday right back to you. It's always a pleasure to talk to you, Tony. We're talking about this public option right now. Um, instead of state government controlled health insurance, you and Republicans are proposing a better way uh, so you don't drive out thousands of jobs that I just mentioned. This is something like the, the Democrats would like to do. Talk about that better way, if you don't mind. Well, Gary, all you need to say is you start an introduction by saying, I'm from the government and I'm here to help you. How many people just run away when they yeah. hear that statement? And this is yeah. exactly what a, a state-run health insurance plan you know, we have instituted a called a partnership plan, which enrolled our teachers and, and municipal employees. And would you believe that it is running in the red? It is, it is losing money. It is limiting possible choices. And you know when, when the state runs their plans badly and it runs in the red, guess who's on the hook? It's the taxpayers. Of course. And, and, and there's no experience in running it. And that's the challenge, right? Look, insurance companies are not on people's holiday Christmas lists because they have to say no. They have to manage the challenges of, of, of denying uh, approvals and, and, and being sticklers. and be. Could they do better in the public relations size? Absolutely. But the reality is the business of health insurance is expensive. It's complicated, and it's deeply personal. If we knew how to solve health insurance costs containment, we would have done it 30 years ago. <laughs> and that's the theme here. Make no mistake about it. Democrat, Republican, the governor, we're all looking to address the issue of health insurance costs that has increased at a, at a straight line up, and, and there's no end in sight. So we all agree that we have to find solutions. The problem is having the idea of a state-run plan that the, the controller, Mr. Limbo, wants to run and the Democratic majority wants to run is, again, a reliance that government knows better. For us on the Republican side, we are looking to collaborate. We have a better way. And what that means is being able to use the marketplace, use the experience and the expertise and the engagement of our insurance companies, which you're absolutely right, provides a lot of business to our, uh, uh, you know, income sure. to our states and yeah. jobs to people. So our better plan was to use a reinsurance plan. Reinsurance is a constant uh, and, 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 and often used uh, product that, that minimizes risk, dilutes it, and spreads the risk out. We can use federal money, relief money, to be able to spread out the risk and lower premium costs. Another suggestion is to use benchmarking. You know, we use benchmarking in regards to price comparison. Mm -hmm. Well, we can use benchmarking, just as they did in Massachusetts, to be able to streamline and identify cost parameters for procedures, cost, and, and, and the relative delivery of health care so that there is a benchmarking so nobody goes and offers something 20% higher because they're, they're a brand name or something. The third component we talked about was addressing the issue of prescription drug cost. Oh. We are an innovator. For example, Connecticut should be incredibly proud that Pfizer was, was obviously one of the uh, first proponents of the COVID vaccine. So we want the innovation and, and the life-saving aspects of pharmaceuticals. But at the same time, we need to manage some of the astronomical cost increases that are being foot and, and borne by consumers. The fourth component that we added in is the fact that we wanted accountability, transparency, and auditing processes. Every insurance product that is managed by our insurance carriers in the state of Connecticut has to report uh, their data, their, their, their financial status, to the Department of Insurance, which is one of the best in the country. Would you believe that the state-run plan right now, the partnership plan, and the one that's being proposed, Gary, 
does not have a transparency requirement. We in the insurance committee, in a bipartisan basis with Democrats and Republicans, impose that on this uh, public option plan. And the proponents of this state-run plan, maybe they're fearful of transparency, maybe they're fearful of sunlight, the fact that, you know, we had said, you need to provide the data. If the plan is in the red, the people that are footing the bill, which are taxpayers, need to know. But unfortunately, Mr. Lembo is very upset that we made an amendment to increase transparency, and he wants to take that out again. Did, did, did you the, can't make this stuff up, can you, Gary? No, no. And, and operating in the red. Oh my goodness. Why am I? Why am I not surprised? Uh, and and, op- and as far as transparency is concerned, you know, I, I'm so sick and tired of the double talk from the Democrats because out in public, when they're out in their district, they come across as the most moderate. Oh, I love to work in a bipartisan way. Oh yeah, I I fully believe in transparency, and then. When the rubber hits the road, they're nowhere to be found. There's no transparency there. Matter of fact, with every opportunity to obtain the transparency, as you just mentioned, they decline it. Well, here's another point of uh, transparency. Makes me that sick. Really, people can really vote these people in me. over and over. As I study the plan, Gary, guess what? The Affordable Care Plan, which is federal mandated, has required that every individual, even those with pre existing conditions, must now be covered. I believe that to be one of the important contributions of the Affordable Care Act. Would you believe under this public option state-run plan dictated by the controller can selectively reject people? That individuals with the possibility of pre-existing conditions could be selected out and there is no way to tell them to take them in. So the idea that those with pre-existing conditions under this public option state-run plan could be excluded is something that just absolutely shocked me. That, that you're talking about a better plan, you're talking about public options idea where people are clamoring for this plan. Because if you present it out to them in, a, in an informal question to say, do you want to lower your cost in health insurance? Absolutely. Do you believe that if we offered you one that is lower in cost and higher in accessibility, would you take it? Absolutely. But then you find out the details, that you've got to stay in the plan, that if you wanted to drop out, you've got to stay in for three years, and that, that if you had a pre-existing condition or if your pool of individuals was a high risk, that the possibility this plan's arbiter, the plan controller, can say, no, you're too high risk, we can't take you in. You cost too much money. We're speaking with uh, State Senator Tony Wong. Tony, Democrats, they want to put a $50 million tax on health insurance. Now, that would that would raise our premiums, wouldn't it? Without a doubt. Of course, now, yeah. yeah. Now, <laughs> you know, it, it, we nickname it the HIT tax, H-I-T tax. But, but the Lembo plan proposes taxing uh, the, the, the fees on the insurance carriers. The governor's proposal imposes a tax on each policy that's sold. But ultimately, those costs will be transferred on to consumers. And, and so for us, for the Republican better way is we're looking at with the amount of federal relief money that's coming in, we could use that money and allocate it toward a reinsurance plan, what we call a 1032 exchange, and to be able to offset that, reduce the risk, and therefore using federal money that that taxpayers pay into and don't get enough back in Connecticut, and use that to offset the cost. So the $50 million would not come from taxpayers of Connecticut, but from the federal relief fund that we could use to reduce risk by reinsurance. Another factor, though, is what's remarkable is, is the double speak is this. One, that we're talking about how we can control health care cost containment, right? But at the same time, the insurance committee, by a Democratic majority, has passed out significant insurance mandates that, that in one bill, as you know, Gary, they put literally 22 different insurance mandates. Every single one merits. Every single uh, I, procedure and coverage is important. 
but we have to evaluate the cost, right? Mm -hmm. So we have a bill that has 22 plus procedures of insurance mandates, which is going to have a significant fiscal note. And you don't have the choice choosing between uh, 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 breast cancer, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, mammography and, and, and ultrasound tests, which are important to reduce risk, which merited on its own would, would earn passage. But you tack it on with, with 22 other bills that says we're going to provide wheelchair coverages for ind- individuals. That's another factor that increases health insurance costs. Of course it does. Why do we say, the Democrats say, we want to reduce costs, but at the same time continue to add mandates that add to the cost of insurance? And oh. you don't have a choice to vote for one procedure. You have to po- the vote whole for thing. 22, yeah. which you say yes or no. Yeah. And, and, and ultimately, people who have to vote on this have a no-win situation. You've been through that, Gary. Yep. I remember that. We are also uh, broadcasting on Facebook Live. Uh, George is uh, George on Facebook Live is writing in saying, I can remember when insurance rates went up the very next day on the front page of the Hartford Current. St. Francis and Hartford Hospitals increased their rates as well. Quite frankly, it was a trend. Um, let's talk about you're talking about government overreach, Tony. Let's let's. Uh, Let's talk about the proposal from Democrats regarding state-controlled uh, zoning, state government-controlled zoning. We may need another hour for that one, Gary. I know. We only have three uh, minutes. but I know. Yeah. But, but you know, what it comes down to is this. The state believes, the Democrats in Hartford believe that they know what's best for local municipalities. Whether they think they know what's best Democrats for everything. Or Republicans, yeah. the state powers that be at the Golden Dome believe that they have a better solution, that a one-size-fits-all is the proper solution. Make no mistake about it again. Just like with health care insurance costs, Gary, there is a tremendous need to address our housing needs in the state. We need to make them accessible, affordable, and diverse. That is a need that we have. It's a significant problem. But my solution is not a top-down, one-size-fits-all but it needs to be a collaborative effort with neighborhoods, local, state, and federal government. The other major component of this is that instead of using carrots as an incentive, we are now moving to a phase where the state is using a stick through a bill that says we're going to put a legal consent decree if you don't meet the fair share marketplace. Mm -hmm. Another is to say if you have train stations or transit-oriented facilities – and, and that Main Street that we're going to give has a right. What that means in a legal term is you have a right as a developer without a local zoning, public, and planning hearing to, to see the merits of it. Now, make no mistake about it. Many transit-oriented developed towns have already initiated innovative uh, mixed-use designs. The fact is they're saying that the state is making you do it versus having local input. Right. And if you want to go on a higher level, Gary, here's a simple term. The state and the legislators that purport the state-controlled zoning says that zoning is a state right that they enable local municipalities. There is no such thing as home rule. Oh, and my to goodness. Me, that is fundamental yeah. to the foundation of our country and our state is our local home rule should be a focal point in collaborating with state government. Tony, I always thought that Connecticut valued home rule in local zoning. I guess not anymore, according to the majority party Democrats at the state capitol. I've only got 20 seconds, but it's all yours, Tony. Well, more importantly, thank you for the opportunity to be with you, Gary. If it sounds like I'm way too hyped up on coffee, I am, but I'm also thrilled to talk to you to share these thoughts. They're, they're, not, they're not just you know isolated thoughts. They're really, hopefully engaging in people's thoughts to say government should represent you and unfortunately if they don't know enough when these laws get passed yeah people have to bear the burden that's why the opportunity to talk about the public option yeah how republicans have a better way that's not getting a voice and that's why we have you on we always love having you on i can't wait until the next time until then have a great weekend my friend and we'll talk to you soon Uh, All right, Wilson, we're going to come right back to open phones. You need to weigh in on this.